Did you say the uh, culture pillars pound the fish this week? What's that mean to the guys? Oh, it's just a way. It's, it's it's really all five of the pillars. Wind them all up at once. It's a mindset. Uh, today we use the example of Inky Johnson. Just you know, life's going to give you smack. I mean, there's, no, there's nobody in here. No, some bad's already happened today. At some point today, how do you deal with it? It's a pound the fist mentality. It's a chapter in the book. It's not the whole book. It's going to be a period in your life where you, it causes you to stop. At the end of the sentence where it's, it's going to be a comma. You never want to mistake, you know, uh, a comma and a period. You never want to get those things confused. It's always just a, a part of the story. It's not the whole story. So uh, we, we had a few guys share examples, you know, of some things that were some smacks in their life right now, how they're going to respond to it. Jeff, how much of a challenge is it for your defense to prepare for a team like Army on a short week? Yeah, um, it's different for sure. They've done a good job, and they've gotten better each week at doing it. So it's uh, it's always a short deal. It's, it's difficult anytime you play on a short week, but especially when you're going against something so different. Given that they've changed their offense a little bit from the last meeting, are there still principles you guys carry over from one prep to the next, or is it kind of a fresh look at them? No, there's nothing that's carrying over. It's, it's a total different deal. We're going to talk to, uh, or at least we were thinking about talking to Dewan Griffin today. I'm curious, how have you seen him play so far this season when he's gotten back up to speed? Yeah, he's still not uh, all the way there yet, but so he's played really well, but he's going to continue to get better. What have you made of that cornerback's room in general to have you know, Cam coming in here, adding to what you already had with Nick and the other guys? Yeah, I think Cam's played really well. Uh, of course, we knew Nick was coming back and was going to be a good player for us, but, uh, and we thought Dewan was really coming on last year before he hurt his hamstring. So we expected that to, to happen. You said before the year and in the offseason that this defensive line group seems like potentially the strength of the team. How have you felt about what that unit's brought to, to the production-wise overall this season? Yeah, they do, they've done exactly what we thought they would do. They're, they're deep, they're athletic, they're big, and uh, they, they're a good group. They like each other. They share reps. Uh, when you look at the total rep count last week of all those guys, and it's amazing how... They're just okay. They trust us. And they know it's going to be a long year. And uh, they like each other. So it's a, it's a really great group. They're fun. They're always laughing and cutting up. Just a good group. I enjoyed them. Enjoyed recruiting them and enjoyed being around them every day. Coach Haynes has done a really good job with, that, with those guys. That's got to be a, a different mentality you knowing you're giving up some of your reps, right, to let your teammates go in. Yeah, we've played three deep as long as we've been here. And our guys have bought into that, you know. EBE, you know, they, they, they all eat, and uh, that's, they're, they're, they're fun to, they're fun to coach, they really are. We talked before the year about Jermaine carrying a little extra weight this year and how that would translate. How have you seen him perform with that at benefit? Yeah, you can see in the game where he's just literally leaning on people and pushing them back now where that used to not be his deal. So he, he's maintained his quickness, but he's gotten stronger and he's more powerful. What have you seen out of uh, French and Avery at that linebacker position next to Jamal? It seems like both of them are settling in pretty good. Yeah, Avery's really come on. That's the two best games he's ever had in his career. I believe he's been a triangle one or two weeks in a row. Uh, he's really come on. Martavius is very talented. He's a triangle award winner as well. So pretty good when uh, two guys are in the other spot or both getting T-shirts. So really proud of both those young men. What do you think is – led to Trey, Trey Moore has four sacks through two games. What do you think has led to that so far? Well, Trey is relentless. He's very quick. He's athletic. And uh, we do our best to put him in positions where we think are favorable for Trey to have success. Have you guys done anything different defensively to generate the amount of pressure you have, or is it guys just kind of winning their matchups up front? Uh, it's just a style of offenses that we've played. You know, we play two teams that present a different kind probably want to see that this week because we're seeing a different style of offense. So I think style of offense and just uh, a bunch of kids returning. You know, a lot of guys that have played a lot of ball for us uh, that know the scheme real well and bought into the culture. The the play of the defensive backfield seems like it's improved from this time last year. Is that something you guys have noticed or worked on or is it, you know, just 
getting new personnel in or having depth there? Um, you know, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I'm trying to just think. Losing Cliff was a big loss, yeah. but getting Rashad back was a big advantage. It's just familiarity. I mean, Cliff is gone, but Kelechi's back. I mean, Javon Devon's back. I mean, there's so many guys back there. There's just – I'm just trying to think of anybody that's new out there playing. And I guess it'd be Cam at corner. And Elliot some too. Yeah. Elliot, well, there's a good example. But he played a lot of college football last year. Yeah. And that's what's expedited the turnaround of a lot of these teams is you're getting a lot of transfers that have played a lot of football already. So there's just a lot of familiarity on defense, which is the kind of the opposite right now on our offensive side. You know, we've got a lot of turnover and change. and It's just hard to get good when you haven't played a lot. Yeah. And nobody wants to hear that because we're in a – we're in a microwave society, right? And we just want to give me my popcorn, give me my whatever, give me my nachos in 25 seconds, let me crush them. Or sometimes, you know, a good old barbecue that sits out there and simmer and slowly cooks is a really good meal. It just takes a little while to get that meal. And that's where we're trying to get to offensively right now. We're just trying to, trying to get better a little bit every day. We've gotten a little glimpse of Robert Henry the last couple weeks. What does he bring to the earning back room that's a little bit different and maybe stands out? Uh, he's a really good athlete. He's really good with the ball in his hand. And he's just learning the offense still. We're still getting some things worked out. But as the year progresses, you know, he'll continue to show he's too talented not to. What's your philosophy on rotating guys when you have, obviously, a workhorse back like Kavorian, but then – Rocco and Robert have both shown that they kind of deserve some run, too. We'd like to get to the point where it's a two-headed monster for sure with a third one going out there when we feel comfortable. But we're just not quite there yet with just, just some things we've got to get cleaned up still. How would you assess the play of your tight end group? Obviously, you lost Dan in the first game. That's, that was a, kind of a big loss for that group, right? Yeah, he's a really good football player. So uh, Houston and Cam come out there and done well. And uh, we got to get the ball in Oscar's hands more. We've not done a very good job of getting the ball to him. Um, so we've got to do a better job schematically of just getting him targeted. One of the things we didn't get to ask you about after the game, there was a couple of scenarios where it seemed like Frank was upset with something related to getting some calls in from the sideline maybe, or was there some issue with the communication there, or what, what happened? No, it was just uh, some guys on the field. He looked at the wrong signal, and it's kind of hard when your quarterback's telling you to do something. And, you think you saw something else, and it's frustrating, especially when there's 50,000 people screaming, your head coach is screaming, your coordinator is screaming. And sometimes it gets a little fasty out there, man. It's a fun environment. Thank you. Thanks,